Patty Stocker here from Westford Cat with a special series that focuses on regional artists that are scheduled to display their work at the Paris Center for the Arts Artist of the Month exhibitions. I recently spoke with Emily Keith, a local ink illustrator studying at the New Hampshire Institute of Art. Emily lives in Westford, is a graduate of the Academy of Notre Dame in Tingsboro, and has been a professional artist for the past five years. We spoke of her unique style of illustration. I would describe it as sort of a mystical, gothic form of art, and very interesting. Um, can you describe it in your own words? No, oh, definitely. So I would definitely describe it as gothic and mystical, um, very pagan in background with uh, old witchcraft and Wicca styles. It is based off of old block print from old book prints with line weight and stuff to add that real dark aesthetic to it. Line weight, can you uh, describe what that means to our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. So line weight um, dictates the thickness and thinness of line to represent shadow and light cast. So when I'm using line weight, I use very scratchy, thin line to represent lighter form and dark, thick line for shadow. So it creates a very dimensional piece with it still being flat. You know, you mentioned witchcraft and there are a lot of female figures in your work, female hands, uh, female bodies. And, um, what inspired you to engage in this particular art form? Um, so I think figure is very beautiful. I've always been a fan of doing the figure and um, it's something that I explore in my artwork. Um, I like the idea of showing the beauty of human form and with the femininity of hands, I also tie it back to my Celtic background of Celtic witchcraft in my family. And they were all women witches practicing um, and that's where I get the inspiration for most of my uh, lady witches. Where were they practicing? Um, they, it, uh, so it's such a long time ago that I heard about this, but um, we had apparently had a family of Wicca witches in the Celtic circle. Um, they never told me where they were from, but my grandfather used to say, oh, you know, my sister, she still practiced the line, but I died out. So it's, it's like, they, they won't even tell me. I have to do research on it. Fascinating. I mean, definitely it's in your blood. Definitely in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you um, get started? Oh, well, so what's your background? I, um, I've been drawing for a long time. I think the earliest memory I have is probably when I was maybe like five doing finger paintings and then scratching with chalk. Um, I would always liked carving out like shapes from negative space. So I'd always do a color down and do something on top of it. And then as I got older, I started researching painting and I did paint for a while before I really found like a comfort zone with just drawing in general and ink. Um, and I've been, I think I started professionally selling and making art about five years ago. Did you study anywhere or is this all self-taught? Um, so I was self-taught for a majority of my time until I started attending the New Hampshire Institute of Art in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, and going there really elevated my um, skill and my understanding of art, which I was very grateful for. Um, I'm currently finishing my senior year. Nice. Oh, great. Good for you. you. So um, how is, is the shutdown affecting you in any way with COVID-19 and your people at, you know, viewing your art and obviously you can't have any exhibitions right now. Right. How are you faring? Um, it was definitely difficult in the beginning. I didn't understand. Um, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be. Uh, a lot of my income had come from doing markets and being out in the public and engaging with people. Um, so I had suffered a lot of loss in asset because of COVID with everything getting shut down. Um, but I did end up gaining a lot more followers on my social media just from word of mouth and people saying like, oh, you know, you should go support these artists because they could really use it. Uh, because so much of our world is interacting with the public and being out there and selling our work. You can only go so far online. So you have ink illustrations and then you edit them in Photoshop and then you make prints. So if people want to... Um, find your work, where can they find you, Emily? Um, so they can find me on Facebook under Emily V Arts. They can also find me on Instagram under Emily V Arts. And I also do have a big cartel shop where they can find prints and stickers. And that's Emily V Keefe 
www.bigcartel.com. Do you do commissions? I do. I, I do. Very, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm actually currently talking with a band about doing their next album cover and merchandise features. And I just finished working with a small shop in Salem, Femme Fatale, on um, doing a uh, branding promo for them. Okay, so let's talk about some of your work specifically. Uh, how about this one, When She Came Calling? So this is one of my favorite pieces that I've done so far. Um, originally I was doing a series, uh, that I ended up putting away because I'm back in school now, so I just don't have the time for it, but it was going to be a series on familiars. So within, um, witchcraft and like involving witches, they'll have what's called a familiar, which is an animal companion that directly correlates to them and helps them with spell casting. And sometimes is often, um, given to them by, in some cases, Satan. So with this familiar, I went with a typical black goat, which is typically seen as the conduit for Satan, and this witch riding into her new coven, into a new lifestyle of witchcraft and pagan witchcraft. Um, so that was the kicking into the series. And it was really fun to work on because I love the embellishments and I love working with animals and the figure. It was definitely very fun to do, uh, very challenging, especially with um, working with the back. So I usually work with figures from the front because it's very simple, um, but the back has so much muscle contour, so it was definitely a challenge. How about the haunting? Um, so this one, I, I don't do too many story-oriented pieces, so this was a um, dip in the water in that area. So it's basically using a lot of symbolism, like lost in the woods, a lot of ghosts, when you think of ghosts, are very lost soul. Um, and I wanted to, I use a lot of symbolism in my work anyways, so with the lantern, for example, it's that idea of going towards the light, but you just can't reach it. And um, the idea of spirits in this area where they're in between. Toadstool. So this one, this was definitely just a, um, this idea just popped into my head. I work a lot with um, botanicals and mushrooms. And when I work with mushrooms specifically, I'm usually trying to show like some more beauty in that aspect. Cause when people think of nature or flowers, they'll think of, oh, like roses or lilies and not, not many people think of mushrooms, but they can actually be pretty beautiful, especially with the animals that they shelter and feed. Like toads will live in swampy, marshy areas with a lot of mushrooms. And they're, they're very pretty cute animals that a lot of people overlook too is, oh, they're weird. So it's just to kind of um, show that these are, these are very cute, normal, beautiful things that we don't acknowledge all the time. I went on a hike on, on Mount Wachusett a few years back and took a bunch of photos of mushrooms. They, they come in all different colors and shapes oh, yeah. and sizes. Yeah, I agree. And lighthouse. So you see a ship in a bottle. <laughs> this is a lighthouse in a bottle. <laughs> so this, this was a gift from my grandfather who just recently turned 86. And this was his first birthday without my grandmother. She had passed away just last November. And he's very, he lives, he lives in Maine and he's, so he's right, right by the beach and he used to visit the noble lighthouse all the time but because he's just getting up in age he just can't go anymore it's too much to climb and i figured he has a bunch of ship in the bottles at home he has a lot of beach trinkets at home so this would be a nice gift for him and he always used to joke that i would draw for my grandmother but i would never draw for him so i wanted to give him something special that you know he could say oh it's not just grammys it's mine now so um, I tried to incorporate a lot of things that he liked, like the lighthouse, his ship in the bottles, some botanicals. I really love your work, Emily. And thank, um, you. thank you so much for coming on. And good luck. We hope that, uh, you know, in this world right now, um, between COVID-19 and everything that's going on politically, we really just need something other to focus on than that. So yeah. thank you so much for taking the time today. No, oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I was happy to be here. Emily Keefe will be exhibiting at the Paris Center for the Arts in the near future. Look to the PCA website for details. And look for more spotlights on PCA exhibitors right here on Westford Cat. I'm Patty Stalker. Thank you for watching.